Shalom from Jerusalem, and our Parsha Natot is talking about the war with Midian. And the war with Midian where Jewish people destroyed the entire nation. They only left girls from three and down. And uh, you know, it begs for explanation, begs to, you know, why this particular nation. And not only that, but we see the two nations that really went to war and it seems to be like ideological war and uh, physical war and one of them was Moab and uh, another was Midian and God says leave Moab alone don't do anything to them and Midian destroy all of them what's what's happening what's going on and I'll say just point out that you see uh, Jews were supposed to go through the land of Moab to come to uh, the land of Israel, the land of Canaan, and uh, God told the, the Jews, don't touch Moab, don't touch them at all, which this message was conveyed, but people judge other people like themselves. And Moab says, we know what would happen if we would go through the territory of an other nation. And, uh, you know, both ideologically, physically, and so on, and so they didn't believe Jews, that Jews wouldn't touch them, and didn't want to do anything with them. But God says, look, you know, I understand them. They have fear. That it's a normal kind of animal fear of the person for the life or everything else. Leave them alone. Now, Midianites, as a something else, this is a nation who didn't even live close to where Jews were supposed to come through. So there's absolutely no reason why Midianites should get involved. And they did, purely for ideological reason. And this is already different. And let's look at the Parsha Balak, a couple of weeks ago we uh, read this Parsha, and of course we need to read the Parsha carefully, you know, and it says, uh, said, uh, the following. The elders of Moab and Midian uh, came with uh, occult instruments, they went to Bila, and they con conveyed the message of Balak, who is the king of uh, Moabites, and uh, so the Bilam says, spend the night here, replied to them, and when God speaks to me, I'll be able to give you an answer. And the Moabite dignitaries remain with Bilam. And let's look at this carefully. Did you notice something wrong here? Who came? It says the elders of Moab and Midian. Who remain? It says the dignitaries of Moab. And where's Midian? They're gone. So the oral tradition tells us right here, and the context tells us here, well, what was going on? That Midianites, they said, listen, if he is going to do witchcraft, if he's going to do all kinds of occult tiles, well, maybe you know, he'll be able to do something. But if he goes to God, forget about it. Well, so what is it? This is a total rebellion against God. This is like, you know, like they want to know the truth or you don't want to know the truth. So they say, listen, you know, if he goes for the truth, you know, we, we we're out of here. Now, we realize that nation that denies God, that denies the truth, you know, it's, it's, that's what it's all about. Now, when it came to sending the girls, again the commentaries point out that Moab sent the simple girls to seduce simple people. It was more cultural, if you want, you know, it's like a, a friendship, uh, intercultural relationships, uh, uh, and so on and so on. Of course, the goal was to separate Jews from God, from separateness, and so on, so on. But again, what did Midian do? They choose the princes, they choose the elite to seduce the elite. They went for the head of Jewish people, and that's what they wanted to do. Completely different level, different degrees, and uh, you know, it's like self-sacrifice you know, for the sake of what they believed in. And uh, it's interesting because this is uh, one of the times in the Torah where Moshe Rabbeinu says something opposite to what God tells him to do. Uh, where do we see it? Okay, now, it says, God spoke to Moses, saying to Moshe Rabbeinu, take revenge for Israelis against Midian, and then you shall gather, be gathered to your people, then you should die. Now, what Moshe Rabbeinu says, Moshe spoke to people saying, Detach men for armed service against Midians, so that God's revenge can be taken against Midian. So, what God says? God says, take revenge for Israelis against Midian. 
what the Moshe Rabbeinu says, he says, take revenge for God. Now, what does that mean? You see, it's Moshe Rabbeinu changing what, what God is saying. So, what does it mean? That means love. It means love. God says, I am willing to forgive them for myself, right? You know, it's not for myself, but for you, no. Moshe Rabbeinu says, Maybe we can forgive them for us, right, what we did. For you, God? Absolutely not. And the commentaries also said that, you know, that since God said I could theoretically forgive them for myself, right, you know, but wouldn't forgive for you, that knowing that Moshe Rabbeinu will die right after, that Moshe was afraid that people will say, okay, you know what, you know, uh, we also forgive them. Well, maybe we'll take revenge eventually, you know, but uh, to keep Moshe alive, you know, we're not going to do it right away. So, so Moshe comes to people and says, you know what, this is, uh, we're doing revenge for God, okay? Now, let's think about even further. Uh, Jews had 600,000 men ready to go to war. And Moshe Rabbeinu chooses 12,000. That's about 2%. Now, these people went and they wiped away a nation. They took captive with Remember, little girls, 32,000 little girls. So, you know, calculate how many people there. There are multi-million nation with uh, fortified cities, because said they say that they burn the fortified cities with fire, that with uh, hundreds of thousands of soldiers, 12,000 people, and they didn't lose one person. So, it's absolute miracle. Now, there is uh, one person that is not guilty of murder, in any system, in any court, apart from self-defense, of course, right? You know, what person is that? It's a person who is the executioner of the court. When the court, you know, in every civilized country, you know, says that this man should be condemned to death, and the executioner or executioners uh, do the order of court, they're not guilty. Which court is the most honest, truthful court in the entire universe? It's Hashem's court. So when Hashem says that, you know, these people condemned to death, the Jews become executioners of the court. And by the miracle we saw that this is just, you know, they were just basically God, God's sword. They just went with the sword and they just killed everybody without losing one person. It says here that they made war according to the way God told them to make war. Uh, we don't know very much about what God told them. But it's interesting, there is a technique that is taught today of uh, not touch combat. Believe it or not, I've seen those things where a person can just basically tune into energy and another person just go like this, and the person faints. Now, those people were much higher level, much, much higher level. So we begin to see that they had uh, spiritual skills that are able them to accomplish which is humanly not possible to accomplish. Now, today, we don't have direct prophecy, we don't have those kind of things, so, you know, these things is not possible, meaning, you know, to have a word of God to wipe entire nation, you know, it's, uh, we don't have it. But on the other hand, it's for us today. So, the war with Midianites is happening inside of us. There's a part inside of us that is also knows that the calm can only exist on separation with God. Like, there's a part in us that knows that, and what these parts do, is they try to seduce us, they try to say to us that, you know, it's like, look, you know, the lifestyle of opposite to God is so sweet, and it can be promiscuity, it can be other ways of how we can, you know, deal with our ego, and so what the Torah tells us is that we have to find this part and we have to destroy them. But not the parts, right? Those manifestations. Because the little, the thoughts, the little feminine part that is able to change, to absorb a new message, to grow up the way they should be grow up, those parts within ourselves we leave and we bring to the fold, sort of speak, right? You know, and we let them grow. So that fight with Midianites is with us and the fight is on and we have to win this war as well. From Jerusalem, Shalom Shalom.